Hello everyone and welcome to Medicated Housewife DIY where crafting and mental health come together. My name is Sarah. Today's DIY video is a romantic neutral Valentine's decor DIY using Dollar Tree supplies. We are making three gorgeous boho inspired Valentine's designs. Love is all around so stick around and let's go make some stuff and jump right into this. In today's DIY video, we are making three romantic, neutral, and boho Valentine's Day decor projects using Dollar Tree supplies. These Valentine DIYs are pretty easy to do and they fit in beautifully into your everyday home decor. Plus, they only cost a couple of dollars and what's better than that? To get started, I'm using one of these wooden hearts from Crafter Square at Dollar Tree. I removed the little twined handle from the top because we really don't need it and I'm also using this cotton mop head from the cleaning section of Dollar Tree. I love using these mop heads for DIYs. They're really soft and they end up just feeling so much more high end than a mop head, you know? And in the past I used these to make some beautiful boho tassels uh, in another video which if you have not seen it, I will link it in the description box below for you. Now I already had one of these mops taken apart so I'm using what's left of that one for this project but the plastic that holds the cotton mop together comes apart really easily and the rope is all in same size pieces so it's really easy to use just as is. We are going to be weaving the rope from this mop for our wooden heart so the easiest way to do this is to assemble about 10 columns of three pieces of rope. Each three piece bundle is a section and what I did here is to lay out the 10 columns of three in front of me, place this clipboard on top with some weight on it to hold the rope in place while we weave it. So I lift the first three piece section and drape it over the top of my clipboard, then the third three piece section, then I do the fifth, and then the seventh, and last but not least, the ninth. And I place my first three piece row right over the remaining sections. This is, wow, this is how we weave. To do the second weaving row, we lift and drape the second section followed by the fourth, the sixth, the eighth, and the 10th. And we place our second row of three pieces down onto the remaining columns. Each subsequent row goes under and over alternating with each row as you can see me doing here and I think I did 10 or 11 rows total and at the end I did cut one of my three piece uh, sections in half so that my last two rows were shorter than the rest and I only did that because I thought I would run out of the rope before the end and the other mop that I had was a slightly different color than this one so I didn't want to mix and match the two different color ropes so I did what I had to do to make it work. When I finished that, I had a nice loose weave to glue to my heart. Now, as I said, this weave was pretty loose. It is not a tight weave, so it's possible that you can see some uncovered spots under the weave, but because this was an unfinished wood heart at its base, it wasn't too, I wasn't too worried about seeing through to the wood because they're all kind of beigey colors and they all kind of coordinated together nicely anyway. I placed my heart down on kind of a diagonal and I started to glue the weaved rope down to what would be the back of my heart. And I took my time doing this and stopping to trim the excess rope as I glued and slowly making my way around the entire heart until the weave was firmly glued down to the back of the heart. After my weave is glued, I decided the heart needed more romance and I wanted to put the word love on there, but as I've told you guys before, my Dollar Tree has no love in stock. So I had to make my own and I decided to use twine to do this. I printed out the word love in script to the size that I wanted. I had seen people use thin wire wrapped with rope in order to make it more pliable and easier to bend into letter shapes and to stay that way. I didn't want to use uh, this super thin floral wire that I have from Dollar Tree because it seemed like a little too flimsy. So I opted to use some pipe cleaners, which I just so happened to have a bunch in these lovely neutral colors, including almost the same beige color as my jute twine. I had bought these on Amazon for another project. I will link them below, but you could also use 
any color pipe cleaner for that for this you just you have to wrap your twine a little tighter then to prevent the pipe cleaner color from peeking through I attached two pipe cleaners together to start though please take note that I did have to add another pipe cleaner wrapped with jute at the end because I didn't have enough twine wrapped wire to make my word as long as I needed it to be. So do yourself a favor and start with three pipe cleaners. To wrap the twine, all you do is tie a small knot around the pipe cleaner with your jute and begin wrapping the jute around it, including wrapping that little tail from the knot that you made with the jute. After my twine's all wrapped up, I use my love printout as a template and I shape out the pipe cleaner to spell out love. I'm using painter's tape to hold the word in place on the paper. And then I cut a couple of pieces of that kind of flimsy, thin floral wire from Dollar Tree and I use that wire to secure the word at all the points where the jute wire crosses. So I'm securing it at the point where my capital L loops around on the top and where it loops around on the bottom and also at the top of the O and also the E. Basically, anywhere I feel the word needs reinforcement, I take the wire and I twist it around that section of the word to hold it all together. This sounds so complicated, it's totally not. I think you can tell by watching me do it that it, it's not nearly as complicated as that sounded. Once my love is all secure, I hot glue it to the front of my heart. I also glued some nautical rope to the edges of the heart and made a little nautical rope hanger attached to the back of my heart. And this is how my mop head woven love heart turned out. How cute is this? The cottony woven front has this boho vibe and the love in the front brings it right back to Valentine's. Without that word in the front, this heart could easily fit into your everyday home decor. It's just very cozy looking and I'm in love with the love. Let me know in the comments what you think. Our second boho neutral decor Valentine heart is another Jingle Block based heart and I did three Jango Block hearts in my last video. If you didn't see it, I'll link it below. But I used a five inch heart printout as a template and placed my Jango Blocks standing up along the line and traced the heart shape out with the blocks. Then I used some wood glue to attach the blocks together to form a solid heart outlined shape. Once the glue was dry, I took my jute twine from the Dollar Tree and I wrapped the entire heart with the jute using Gorilla Hot Glue to secure the jute to the wood blocks every so often. And that's just to keep the jute from moving or from sliding around. Once the heart is completely wrapped, I tied some jute to the top of it with a large wood bead and I used that as a functioning hanger. For the heart. I also tied some additional pieces of jute and assorted wood beads in various lengths to hang down from the bottom of the heart. Off camera, before I finish this, I also made five simple jute beaded tassels and I tied those to the bottom of the heart as well because before that it had looked a little sparse down there to me. And this is how boho heart number two turned out. Okay, I love this one. It's very boho. I love the neutral colors and I would 100% use this piece for everyday decor. The only valentiny thing about this is the heart shape. I think it's really cool looking. I can't, however, pinpoint a name for what this is. Is it a door hanger? Is it a dream catcher? Is it a small wreath? I don't know. You tell me. Let me know in the comments. Neutral Decor Valentine number three is a macrame heart shape coaster. Now, I can't take credit for this idea. I saw another content creator make this on her channel. Her name is Create with Jen, and I was dying to give it a try. So, props to Create with Jen for this idea. I have this huge roll of macrame cord that I got on Amazon, and I'll link it below. I'm also using a scrap wooden dowel that I had around the house. And for the macrame cord, I cut two pieces at 60 inches, four pieces at 13 inches, and 12 pieces at 41 inches, like I wrote here. But 
I ended up with some pieces at the end of this macrame coaster that were way too short. So my advice to you is not to listen to the measurements that I'm showing you here in the video and to increase all of those lengths by about eight to 10 inches because it's better to have too much that you can then trim away later than it is to have too little. So just do as I say, not as I do. And because it looked like I cut off the video at the bottom there, the 12 pieces that you're cutting, it's 12 pieces at 41 inches is what that little piece of paper says, but I want you to do 12 pieces at like 51 inches instead. So we take the two longest pieces, that's the two pieces that are 60 inches long, and we fold each piece in half and tie them in a lark's head knot to the dowel. Now a lark's head knot is when you place the loop over the dowel and pull the rest of the cord under the dowel and through the loop, pulling it back towards you tight. So we're tying our two longest pieces in lark's head knots in the middle and then we do the same thing with all 12 of the 41 inch pieces. You're going to fold them in half and tie them in a lark's head knot six on one side of the 60 inch pieces and six on the other side of the 60 inch pieces. The four 12 inch pieces that we cut can be put aside because we're gonna use those later. The first thing I do is to use some painter's tape to tape down my dowel and that's just to make it easier to do the macrame without your dowel moving all around. For the first macrame row, we are tying one square knot in the middle. The square knot is a really simple knot and you take four pieces of cord, the ones in the middle. We're gonna take one piece furthest to your right and place it over the two pieces of cord that are in the middle, like you're making a number four. And then you take the piece of cord to your left and bring it under the two middle pieces and through the loop that you created with that number four. And you're gonna tighten this up to about one and a half inches from the top of your dowel. Then you reverse that by taking the cord that's on your left and making a backward number four over the two middle cords. You then take the cord from your right and bring it under the two middle cords and through the loop of your backward number four and you're gonna tighten that to the first part of your knot. That two-step process makes one complete square knot and this is your first row. The second row is going to consist of two square knots and we are going to take two pieces of cord from each side and combine them with the four pieces of cord that's in the middle. It's just easier if you watch how that works and how we, we do the knots the same way. It's just that we're dividing the middle four pieces, two on one side, two on the other, combining them with two from each side. Third row has three knots. We take another two pieces of cord from each side in order to do this. Now your fourth row is going to have four knots across and you're gonna incorporate another two pieces of cord from each side. And your fifth row is going to have five knots going across and you're gonna accomplish that by taking another two pieces of cord from each side. Your sixth row is going to have six knots going across and you accomplish this by taking two pieces of cord from either side again. And your seventh row is going to have seven knots going across. You take two pieces of cord from either side again. Now we take two of those 12 inch pieces that we put aside for later. We're gonna fold one of them in half and we're gonna tie that in a lark's knot on the, onto the two pieces of cord furthest to your left, like what you're seeing us do right here. And then you're gonna move that knot up and put it in place in line with the other knots. And then we're gonna take our second 12 inch piece of cord, fold that in half, and on the two pieces of cord furthest to your right, we're going to tie a reverse lark's knot. And what a reverse lurks knot means is that you're going to tuck the loop under the two pieces of cord and pull your other side through that loop. It's just the lark knot, but 
reversed and you're going to do that on the other side. After we tie the two Lark's knots, we move on to the next row and putting the two furthest cords on both the left and the right aside. So we're only tying the cords that are in between those. So we're going to make six knots in between the two side Lark knots. The next row is seven knots, including the two cords furthest on both sides. So we are only leaving out those two short little side Lark's knots. Next, we take our final two 12 inch pieces and we tie another Lark's knot on the furthest two cords on the left side, and then a reverse Lark's knot on the furthest two cords on the right side, just like we did before. Next, we're going to leave two cords, the two cords that are furthest out on both sides, out, and we're going to tie a row of six knots across the rest. Then, with just the two Lark's knots on either side left out, we're going to do three knots across starting from the left, and then three knots across starting from the right, as you could see us do here. This final row, we push the two cords furthest to the end on both sides away, and we're going to do two knots starting on the left, and then two knots starting on the right. This is going to be our last row. Now we take our upside down heart and slide it off the dowels and use the scissors to cut all the loops that we just slid off of the dowel. Now here is where things went a little wrong for me because I tried to take the two longest pieces from the top of the heart, cross them over one another and then use them as anchors and use them to tie, you tie a double knot onto them with each hanging piece of cord that was left over. And I tried to do this, but because some of my hanging pieces were so painfully short as I went around the heart, I know that I did not tie this outline around the entire heart correctly. It was pretty messed up. <laughs> just I'm um, being real with you all. It was pretty messed up. It wasn't a fail. It was just a not so great. I tried to salvage my heart by making some fringe and combing and trimming and trying to even it out a little bit, but there is nothing you can do when your cord is too short. You can't make it longer. But I did my best. <laughs> I did my best. And this is how my macrame heart coaster turned out. Not my finest macrame project ever, but it's cute in a shabby chic kind of way. I think it's a nice neutral Valentine edition and I do plan on doing this project again, but this time I would do it the right way. All in all, still a cute project though, still a cute project. And these are all three of my romantic neutral Valentine's decor. I think these are definitely all neutral decor. Some are a little boho, some are a little shabby chic, but they all have that heart-shaped Valentine look as well. Three different looks for Valentine's decor and beyond, and all would work for everyday decor too. We made these with mostly Dollar Tree supplies, so they are all inexpensive to make, which is always great. Let me know in the comments what you think and which one is your favorite. I hope you enjoyed this medicated housewife DIY, and if you did, please consider liking and subscribing for more fun, easy, and beautiful DIYs. Thank you for watching. Until next time, I'm the Medicated Housewife, and crafting is my medication.